2024 is going to be an exciting year with the races. After struggling to find any sort of consistent form last season, this year I was determined to get a great start. I'd spent the winter months reading about the importance of diet to the performance of a racer. This meant I had to learn a tick bean from a pea and carbs from proteins. It was also shaping up to be a successful breeding season and everything was going swimmingly. So here I am in my pyjamas. Um, two days after my operation I can barely walk. So unfortunately for Carenza she's been given the short uh, straw and she's out there cleaning the uh, feeders. Having waited eight months for a repair to an injury I'd picked up last August, I was now set to be out of action for at least four weeks. Right, so we're heading over to Roth now to check on the birds. Uh, my mum's already in there. My dad is out of order for like another two weeks because uh, he's had an operation so me and my mum are going to take care of them for the minute. So they have Reeded. Uh, most of them have already hatched. The mum in here, which I think she's sitting by her. You've got the bottom two here. These are growing quite nicely. There's a mum up there. I, I'm pretty sure they're all in here. Like the young birds and the old birds. So it's pretty crowded. That isn't a real egg, by the way. That is a plastic egg. That that um, front one. It bit me this last week. The bottom one here is the two mealies. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and then you've got two ones that are growing pretty well. Oh, so those are my birds. Bro, oh, yeah. Like, my own bird pecked me. I don't think. Was that the one that pecked you? Yeah. I thought it was them. No, it was them. My mum's just scraping it out. We've fed all the pigeons. Like stroking them a lot so we can get them used to us being around so they come become quite tame. It was turning out to be a proper family affair. Even seven year old Jasper put down his Nintendo to help us out. I think Daddy told me that anything. Really hungry. Let's go. Hey. The young birds were now weaning, so hand feeding was part of the fun. Why do pigeons eat seeds? I can't whistle well. Well, there's not just seeds, there's peas and things in there too. Hmm. Cut peas. With over 30 hungry beaks to feed, this is a great opportunity to get the family involved. <laughs> I think that could be considered a success. If you, as always, as everybody always says, if you like the channel, then don't forget to uh, subscribe and click the notifications bell. I think um, something like 90% of the people that watch the channel aren't actually subscribed. Uh, and don't have the notifications, so uh, do that, that'd be great. It helps the channel, for sure. The following morning, I found what remained of our resident blackbird after a visit by an unfriendly sparrowhawk. I just hope these guys were paying attention. Having pretty much recovered from having my abdominal muscles sliced and stitched, it was now time to have a deep clean of the lofts. I'd fitted grills to the floor the previous season as it helped keep the detritus, faeces and parasites out of the birds' mouths when they were scratching around on the loft floor. But the truth is, this just made me lazy and as I'd been unable to lift anything heavier than two fingers for months, all of that mess was now waiting to be cleared. But first I had to get the hawk treat back into the loft. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
I bet there's a bag of feed in all of that muck. Seeds that they didn't want. Fast forward several weeks and I'd managed to get a few training tosses in. Last year I found the birds were being dragged via the neighbouring village where most of my club members had lofts before dog-legging back home. As far as I can tell I'm probably too late to change that behaviour, at least in the two-year-olds, but with the sun shining, a packed lunch and a flask full of coffee I thought I'd give two up tossing a go and it actually went a lot better than I expected, with the birds being watched in the other end by my partner in crime, who rang me to tell me who was in and when, and I duly recorded. Uh, first pair went at 35, second pair have just gone now, five minutes later, so there should be two and then two. Right, so it's, um, that time again it's the most nerve-wracking the worst time of the year and we're going to let the young birds out and it's uh, it's super scary because they don't necessarily know how to get back in and we've had loads and loads of sparrowhawks around um, so yeah I hate this I hate the first few days just getting them in and out so I've got the trap open up there I've got the aviary open they've been in the aviary all week or last two weeks so they know what the garden looks like um, and I've had a few just outside the door there. I've opened the door and I managed to get them back in. They're really hungry. It's the key thing I think with young birds is you've got to make sure that they're really hungry. So they haven't been fed at all today. They haven't been fed since yesterday morning. Um, so they're ravenous. <clears throat> so when I shake that, when I shake this, I give that a shake and then hopefully they will all come in. I shouldn't do that now, should I? Um, but yeah, let's see, we're on hawk watch. There are tons of sparrowhawks around. Usually they appear and disappear in a flash, so unless you're looking out for them, they're easy to miss. So for these young birds that are not yet taking flight, well, they'd be seen as a really easy meal. I cannot be too vigilant, and this bit really isn't fun. So just over my shoulder, up there, I can see right in the distance, there's a, um, a bird of prey, which I think, I think is a, um, a buzzard the way it's flying but it's just a tiny speck but I can't I can't be too complacent because the, in the week there was um, I was just looking up over there as I went to get the camera and there was a massive uh, sparrowhawk hen up there and she came flying down like a peregrine into the pigeons in the tree not my pigeons they were uh, doves actually um, ring neck doves but yeah squeaky bum time right so I clocked her Sparrow hawk up there circling and um, I didn't really want to push my luck so the main aim of this is just to uh, get the birds used to coming outside having a bit of a fly around looking what the loft looks like and knowing how to get back in so shaking the tin uh, the, the food and then them all uh, going back in within a few minutes so uh, mission accomplished we'll do the same thing again tomorrow I won't feed them too heavy today and um, hopefully the weather will be all right tomorrow we'll do the same thing um, and usually within a few days they sort of they get used to it and they know what they need to do um, but yeah I'm always just very nervous it may well be a buzzard actually but um, I just I don't want to risk it so right now on a very very windy day we're trying to get through all the vaccinations this is the Columbavac PMV and I've already managed to vaccinate myself and I've vaccinated mummy yeah. Um, so we're saying that's a hen? Yeah, I think so. So what we do now is we, uh, we vaccinate with that snazzy little device there and then we put the phone number rings on. Mm. And then if they're one of a... Ooh. There we go. And then mommy puts that one in there. I'll grab another one. Is that way it goes? Move back a bit. You can't race birds in the UK unless they've had their PMV jab. It's a vaccination against paramyxo, and if you get that in a loft of unvaccinated racers, it'll wipe them out. So we're spraying a little bit of rubbing alcohol, uh, isopropanol, or isopropyl. And it just um, infects, disinfects the site, but it also um, wets down. So that it's uh, very easy to see that's a hen. That 
As I missed out on a holiday in 2023, I had the bright idea of booking a trip to Gibraltar the week of the first race. But still, pigeons were on the mind. So we're meant to be here to look at the monkeys, but actually I'm just looking at the, uh, the pigeons. Meanwhile, back home, the racers were under the care of Pigeon Watch, a crack team of bird looker after us. This is how it turned out when my mate James took his turn. Get in. The mischievous one. Can you, can you tell by that? Get in. Oh, come on, you little git. Come on. There he is, right. Wish me luck. Come on, little git. Come on. Let's be friends. Come on. That's it. No, 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 other way. That's it. No, 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 back in. Go on, get in. Oh, you mother James, you don't seem to have the uh, the minus touch. You're not whistling quite right. So. More like that. Give that a go. So my, uh, my olive. Cheers, James. Come on, get your ass in. Oh, you f Honestly, he had his head in then, just left his arse out. Come on, just get in! Have you got those birds in yet, James? Let's eat my burger. Just up there, you can see there. Come on, just get in! Mother right, so, back from sunny Gibraltar, and it's time to now train the... Um, train the cocks. I'm not going to train the hens this week because they're way behind and I'm not going to send them to the race in two days time. But these are our two teams of cocks. We've got the yearlings in one side, cock, uh, two year olds in the other. I've got um, a couple of yearlings in with the with the older cocks because to make out the, the numbers are a bit more even. I could really do with those uh, one of those cock boxes, sounds weird. Um, they're individual compartments. I, I like the idea of those. Um, but they've been flying really well, um, thanks to um, Matt, who uh, works with me, my dad and uh, James, and mine. They've looked after the birds while I've been gone, so um, they all, none of them are dead, which is good. But yeah, they're in good shape. So we've had a bit of a training flight to take the fly out of them today. And I flew them last night when I got back. And now we're gonna take them up the road, just do a quick 12, 15 mile chuck, whichever one. And, uh, and then I might do another one tomorrow if the weather's all right, and then it's a race on Saturday. So um, they have had a few chucks previously, um, but with me taking a week off, it's just kind of broke the, the flow of things. But they all seem in good spirits. So let's see how we get on. It's uh, it's actually sleeting. Meant to clear up by uh, two o'clock, so I'll have to wait. It's annoying. All right, dog. Are you all right, dog? Come here. Then. Oh boy. Very windy today, isn't it? It's bizarre how quickly race day seems to come around. I'd missed the first race, but had sent my team of cocks to a race from Aycliffe on a cold but sunny day. So, we are racing from Aycliffe today, which I think is around 100 miles, which means it's gonna be a fast race because we've got a north wind. Eight o'clock in the morning, which means I need to take the young birds off darkness. Wow. Good morning, guys. Hi. 
Hi, Charlie. How are you doing? All right, how are you? Um, eight. They're being, they're being, they're being in just over an hour and a half. They're being, be te they're being be 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? Yeah. Northeast off my, uh, off my weather, Vane. North, northeast? Eh? Do you reckon a northeast wind? Well, that's what it is on my weather, Vane. Whether that's right or not, I didn't know. Yeah, it says northwest on there, and it's most, mostly north, but it's, it's quite cold, you know. It is. Uh, we're doing fast time. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll get set up then, ready for you them. You won't be set up. Uh, oh, they might do to over 2,000 yards a minute. Uh, <laughs> that'd be nice. Have a good I'll, money, gear, I'll gear in around about 11 o'clock, see how you've gone on. Righto, Charlie. See you later. Right. Cheers, Mara. Bye. So, I've had them on darkness for not very long. Uh, how long have I had them in darkness for? But it's working because there's feathers everywhere. I've just got this thin little um, sheet, black sheet. And I just I paper clipped, not paper clipped it, safety pinned it. And because um, like everything I do, it's temporary and ends up being semi-permanent. Guys, so, I wonder if I could get a quick, quick mow of the lawn. Make a little welcome home banner. Tell you what, six months of not being able to lift a sausage and now I'm a real boy. Partially synthetic. With the birds due imminently, the nerves were clearly beginning to show. I'm just wondering if this elastic band that I've put on your feathers, will that freak you out when you start to flap? And will you fly as if you're being attacked? And then that triggers all the other birds that land and coming back from the race. That's a potential issue, isn't it? Here we are. Come on. Ew. The dropper actually did a perfect job this time, but the first cock fancied a few Come victory on. laps. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. That's one. Oh, I lost a couple of seconds then, didn't we? The first bird was 1998, my section topper from last year's NRCC race from Dunbar, Scotland, who also twice finished third fed as a young bird. Fast. On your own though, weren't you? Four agonising minutes later. Come on. Come on. That's two. Come on. Well, they came from behind me, so that's why they were late. They've been to Ollerton or wherever. And that's, uh, that's why they're so far behind. You need to come straight back, guys. Come on. Right, so uh, I've got 11 birds in. I'm still waiting on eight. They've pretty much all come from behind, so they've overflown. Um, the the loft which is a bit annoying but you know and they've all circled uh for well that last one circled for a good two minutes i, I got bored and went inside um other than 1998 she uh, he circled three times but he was four minutes ahead of the next uh, two or three birds um so i'm hoping he peeled off uh, early enough and came straight here but i didn't see him come in so i think even he went behind the loft because the wind's blowing from the north directly into the loft so Really, I should see them coming from from up here, but I didn't. As he, um, I saw shadows first, which meant they were coming from behind, unless they were really, really high and then circled down. But um, I think he's done 2008 or 2009 yards per minute. That was 1998, um, and then the others are all way down. So uh, first race, let's just see who we get back, and then hopefully we'll do better next race. Yeah, so I uh, just got back from the club and our first bird, 1998, is 
about four minutes behind the winner uh, in the club race so uh, we're miles behind really uh, got to do something to motivate them more I feel like they're not that fussed about getting back so I'm gonna have to work on that I think um, only the first race but still I'd like to I wouldn't like them to be that far behind next week so I'm gonna have to work on something there um.